Thank you for joining all of us this afternoon, the City of Portland and the Portland Development Corporation for its 24th annual Business Awards celebration. My name is Julie Viola. I'm the president of the Portland Economic Development Corporation, and we in the City of Portland are pleased that you're here to celebrate five fantastic companies this evening. The PDC, or the Portland Development Corporation, is the commercial lending and granting arm for the City of Portland. I want to just take a moment, and I think most of the folks on the committee are here, but when I say your name, maybe if you could just stand up for a moment to be recognized. Our board includes Tim Agnew. No, oh, he's here yet. Tim, thank you, Tim. Uh, James Dowd. James, thank you. Uh, Blaine Grimes. Is Blaine, there you are. Uh, Jeffrey Hicklin. Jeff. Uh, the city manager is not here this evening, but he sits on our committee as well. Steve Lovejoy, I know I saw Steve somewhere in my travels this evening. Laura Reading, yeah, there's Laura. And Brianna Voke. These are the members of the Portland Development Corporation. <laughs> I also want to uh, welcome and, and thank you for attending this evening. Uh, Mayor Kate Snyder is here in our midst. There's, there she is. Uh, and Councilors Justin Costa and Councilor Nick Mavadonis is here as well. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Just wanted to take a quick moment and explain just a little bit about the Portland Development Corporation. We've been in existence since the 1990s when uh, city manager Bob Ganley formed this group. And we have a revolving loan program that provides loans to businesses here in the city when they have a gap potentially in bank financing or maybe they're not financeable for traditional lending. And we also do a lot of work with startups here in the city. Currently, we have a portfolio of about $3 million in outstanding loans which has leveraged about another $32 million in private investment. And it's also resulted in the creation of about 120 jobs and also been a factor in retaining about another 191. So its impact is significant here in the city. The PDC also administers a Brownfield Revolving Loan Fund, which provides loans for cleanup of contaminated properties. And that comes from the U.S. Department of um, Protection, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, pardon me. In addition, since the inception of the Business Assistant Job Grant Program in 2012, the Portland Development Committee has granted matching grants for growing startups and businesses. It provides up to $20,000 for the creation of full-time jobs in the low to moderate income sector at $10,000 per job. Through this program, the PDC has helped 44 businesses with over $650,000 in job creation grants, creating 111 jobs, and I know we have some more on our agenda for uh, our December meeting. And the funds for this program are provided from the city's community development uh, block grants. So we have five wonderful awards this evening, and I have the privilege of presenting the first. The 2019 Client of the Year is Drifter's Wife. The business is also known as Maine and Lori, and it's owned by Peta and Arinda Hale. Maine and Lori borrowed funds from the PDC Commercial Loan Program in 2014 to start a wine shop at 63 Washington Avenue, selling natural wines, and a few years later, the Hales incorporated into the wine shop a small wine bar that most probably know as the Drifter's Wife, which now serves food. When the larger space opened at 59 Washington Avenue, they moved to a larger space and expanded. And I'm sure most of you are aware, in August, the Drifter's Wife was named to the Bon Appetit Hot 10 2018 list of America's best new restaurants. The Drifter's Wife is a valuable member of the Portland foodie niche and a great member of our community. Peter is here to receive the award tonight, and Peter, I'd like to congratulate you in receiving this year's Portland Development Corporation Client of the Year Award. So come to Congratulations. Congratulations. This is for you. Thank you. And I think I'm just going to take a picture okay. here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would you Thank like you. to? Yeah, oh, uh, please. Um. <laughs> I didn't prepare anything, but uh, in, since my wife and partner, Arenda, um, couldn't be here, I know that she would want me to say thank you um, to Nell Hannig, especially, who's not here, but um, 
city of Portland uh, was instrumental in helping Maine and Loire and Drifter's Life um, uh, become a reality. Um, we moved here uh, with like a couple suitcases and uh, a baby in Arena's belly, and now we have <laughs> all of you wonderful people uh, that we get to see all the time and serve nutritious, delicious food and great wines and create new stories. So um, we'll continue to work really hard uh, and um, we'll continue to pass the word along that Portland is a wonderful place uh, to raise a family, start a business, plant a garden, etc. Um, thank you very much for having us here tonight and I uh, hope to see you soon. I'm going to go back to work. Uh, thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just a little bit taller than I am. Just a little. Right. So at this point, uh, uh, Councillor Justin Costa will be presenting the next couple of awards, and I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Council, I can't say that altogether, City Councillor Justin Costa. Um, he's going to be presenting the Small Business of the Year Award and the Business of the Year Award. Councillor Costa was elected to the City Council um, in the District 4 in 2014 and was re-elected in 2017 for an additional three-year term. He serves on the Council's Finance Committee, chairs the City's Economic Development Committee, and prior to that, he was on the school board for six years. Please welcome Council Acosta. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, and uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you all for coming this evening um, to celebrate uh, our business community and some of our uh, most successful businesses in the city of Portland. Um, I just want to begin quickly by saying um, I, uh, if city staff who's in the room would mind uh, standing so we could recognize you, uh, particularly our economic development team, Greg Mitchell, our director, um, Lori, Julia, well, I won't do the name thing from up here, but if, it, if you all could please stand so we could give you a round of applause. Um, it is really the uh, tireless work of our city staff that allows so many city programs uh, and the PDC to be able to function in the manner that they do. Um, it's no secret that these are exciting times for economic development in the city of Portland. And by many measures, we are growing in ways that we haven't seen uh, since the aftermath uh, of the Civil War and the fire that uh, nearly destroyed uh, the entire city of Portland. Um, so these are very exciting times, and I will just say personally um, that this is a very exciting time uh, to have the opportunity to be able to participate in economic development. Uh, this is now going to be my third consecutive year uh, chairing the Economic Development Committee. Um, and we're working very hard in partnership with a lot of people who are in this room tonight um, to really change the way that we do economic development and to make sure that as our city grows, it is successful not just for individual businesses, but for the community at large. So as we look out over here and we see the incredible development that's taking place with hotels, with the WEX headquarters, uh, and the coming development of the Portland Company complex, the economic development uh, strategy for the city is getting ahead of that. We have uh, used uh, tax structures available to us to make sure that that valuation is getting shielded and thereby increasing the school funding that comes into the city of Portland. And at the same time, we are using the property tax revenues from this development to pay for new and uh, broad ranging uh, job skills training programs, to expand the opportunities that our Portland adult education system offers for people and a whole variety of other things. Um, so these are very exciting uh, times. Um, and it's very exciting uh, for me to be able to participate in all of those. But we're here today, obviously, to talk about um, a couple of specific uh, businesses. And uh, the first award that I'm going to present this evening is the 2019 Small Business of the Year Award uh, to uh, Charlie Mitchell and Justin Alphon from Bayside Bowl. Um, congratulations. Um, Bayside Bowl is, 
is a pretty well-known business now. Uh, they opened uh, in 2010 in the Bayside neighborhood um, and really haven't looked back. Uh, they became the anchor for people uh, wanting, obviously, to get bowling in the city of Portland, uh, but also for food, live music, and a whole variety of other things. Um, I'm very happy to say that the city has been able to assist in the expansion of Bayside by partnering uh, with Bayside Bowl in a land transaction a few years ago, which allowed for the uh, very successful expansion. Um, but Bayside Bowl is, uh, has been growing by leaps and bounds, and it's clearly uh, a major uh, anchor for economic development in the Bayside neighborhood, uh, which continues to this day. Um, they are wildly successful. Um, they are now hosting nationally known tournaments and uh, being featured on ESPN and Fox Sports and a variety of national networks. Um, the last thing I will say, though, is just uh, like so many other businesses uh, that we will hear from this evening and that we're here to honor, is that uh, they're a part of our community. Uh, Justin and I are friends going back to the first days uh, when each of us started getting involved in politics and public policy. Um, so beyond just being good corporate citizens, you are actually good citizens and good people in our community, uh, which is always uh, something that's much appreciated. Uh, the 2019 Small Business of the Year Award uh, goes to Bayside Bowl, and Justin, I'm happy to present the award to you, my friend. Well, I want to thank uh, the City of Portland and the Portland Development Corporation. Uh, as you heard from uh, Councillor Costa, I like to call him by his first name, I really like that name, uh, Justin, uh, you know, when we, when we found 58 Alder Street, uh, where Bayside is 10 years ago, Bayside was a very different place. I think I'm being kind. Um, but it was a pretty sleepy neighborhood, but we did have some incredible businesses around us. I mean, how many people remember all the sauces coming out of Schlatterbach Foss? You had GNR DeMillo's, and you had businesses sprinkled all over the neighborhood. Um, we did know, and Charlie and I had long conversations, that we were going to take a chance by moving our business to Bayside. Um, and truly, Bayside was taking a chance on us. I mean, we were two green entrepreneurs. We had never run a bowling alley. We had never run a bar. We had never run a restaurant, and we had never booked a band. But we were ready to take on, you know, this, uh, this just small business that we called Bayside Bowl. And what was incredible, uh, even though our business plan was pretty loose, uh, was how much the Bayside Neighborhood Association welcomed us and cheered us. And were our biggest cheerleaders, knowing that we needed to be successful because they needed more attention, we needed more attention to this part of the city. We had three visions for Bayside Bowl. Uh, bring bowling back to the peninsula. Many of you might remember that bowling once was on the peninsula in multiple locations. We wanted bowling back on the peninsula. We wanted to ensure that what we built at Bayside was built around community. We wanted to make sure that when people got down there, you weren't going to be inundated with screens and neons and this and that. You were going to come together to be with friends and to be able to enjoy each other. And finally, Charlie's creation, which today uh, is trying to be mimicked around the country in bowling alleys, was a league, a league that we call Bowl Portland. And at the time, there were about 200 bowlers there. And we wanted a home. We wanted a home of our own. Um, our, our, our start was, uh, had plenty of fits and stops. Uh, I know that this name is not going to be a name that uh, this room isn't going to know, but Ross Furman owned the building. And you know, Ross wasn't that convinced that Bayside Bowl was uh, the right tenant for his, his baby. He had been there for a long time at 58 Alder Street. And in fact, he wouldn't uh, actually get to a yes. So I kept, you know, almost begging him. And he's like, why don't you come up to Eastport? So I drove to Eastport, um, coincidentally where my mom grew up, and he finally took me around. I don't know if you ever get a chance, go to Rossport. Uh, it is unbelievable what, uh, what Mr. Furman has up there. But ultimately, he agreed to lease us uh, Bayside uh, 58 Alder Street. Um, 
Charlie and I, meanwhile, we got in there, and I still remember, I almost probably still have the email that Charlie wrote me and said, we can do it. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, we have two inches to spare. I was like, what do you mean two inches? He's like, we need 12 lanes, and we have two inches to spare. <laughs> I was like, great, we're, we're ready to go. And, uh, um, our opening night in June of 2010, we were thrilled. We thought we were ready for everything. Again, green entrepreneurs, we had no idea what we were doing. And um, by 8 o'clock, we had run out of credit card paper. Uh, so we, were, we, we had to run to another business. They're like, who are you? And we're like, can we just borrow credit card paper? So luckily, they gave it to us. Um, we, we quickly realized that Bayside could be uh, really that community space in West Bayside to really bring a lot of people down there, get more people on the streets all around every time of the day. And you know, regulars kept coming back and back for more, and we were super excited. All of that created an opportunity of a lifetime, what we, you know, Charlie and I talk about, almost a Super Bowl for us in the bowling uh, world, when uh, in 2014, we didn't know that the PBA commissioner was in our house, but he had come to Bayside Bowl saw the league that we were bowling in, Bopo, and saw what he needed so desperately for the PBA. Music, co-ed teams, passion, and he said, we are going to bring the PBA to Maine. Uh, little did the players know, uh, they were not convinced, they were actually quite skeptical, they had never been to Maine, uh, but when they showed up in 2015 for the first uh, PBA league and Elias Cup, they instantly fell in love with our community, with our fans, with Bayside, and we haven't looked back. It was mentioned, but you know, there, is, uh, there are a lot of incredible events in the state of Maine, and we're proud to be one of them hosting the PBA. But just think about what is happening around economic development and showcasing Maine when you have 20 plus hours on Fox Sports that's being broadcast all over the world. I mean, that's pretty special, and we're just proud that we can deliver that for Portland and for the community. Um, after six years, Charlie and I knew it was time to expand, and so we uh, realized that we were just saying no to too much of the community, bowlers, uh, business parties, events. So we embarked on the expansion to, uh, for our business in new and exciting ways. Um, our roof deck facing uh, towards the beautiful sunsets uh, we found a 1968 Airstream, and, uh, and we said, this could be a taco truck, and we had no idea how to get it on top of our rooftop, but we are like, we can do it. Uh, uh, and uh, we didn't, we're, we're not much gardeners, so we thought solar panels would be better for our rooftop gardens, and so we've got uh, 402 beautiful solar panels to produce a lot of energy for a very hard-use uh, business. Um, it transforms our business. It's been incredible to have a business that's now no longer counter cyclical. We used to be, we used to love the winter in the darkness because then people came, came into bowl, but now we love the summertime too. Um, the last thing I'll say is that it's been amazing to watch uh, the community grow around us. I mean, new restaurants, uh, new apartments, new housing. Uh, country bars, everything around. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just remarkable, and now we're cheering them on to uh, come down and, and be a part of uh, West Bayside. Um, the steady hand that has really made Bayside Bayside is my business partner, Charlie Mitchell. Uh, I get to come to these events when I was elected, and now I get to come with Charlie and accept these fun things, but Charlie's there every single day with an unbelievably dedicated staff, uh, and from day one, we had one real simple motto, that we were going to treat our employees, our customers, and our vendors like family. And we've done that from this day one, and a lot of our uh, first employees are still with us, and we are thrilled to be in West Bayside and growing our business. So thank you, uh, Councilor Acosta, thank you, Greg, and the City of Portland for making this a reality for us. Our next award is the 2019 Business of the Year Award, uh, which this year goes to Certify, Inc. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Their, uh, Certify was founded in 2008 by Bob Naveau and his brother Alan, uh, creating world-class, innovative online expense management software. 
uh, which changed the way organizations manage expenses, including travel, purchasing, invoicing, and reporting, to name a few. Uh, many of you know that I'm uh, an accountant in my day job, so that actually is very exciting uh, stuff to me. Um, the competitively priced uh, subscription uh, does not require a contract, which makes these services uh, much more flexible and easy to use. Uh, there are companies now uh, in over 100 different countries uh, that use Certify Solutions to streamline business processes, uh, with Certify's platform now supporting 64 languages and over 140 currencies, making it the largest independent travel and expense management company in the world. Uh, currently, their headquarters is at 20 York Street, um, although I know that they're actually about to take over the uh, headquarters of my daytime employer uh, right down here on Commercial Street. Uh, so that's an interesting connection. Uh, but they are headquartered uh, here in Portland, Maine, where they have more than 130 employees. Um, and they also have an additional location in San Diego. Um, they offer a wide variety of things for their employees, uh, solid medical benefits, 401k, parking, uh, all of those sorts of things, and they have been named one of the best places in Maine to work uh, for now four years in a row. Uh, due to its rapid growth, its position as an industry leader, and the footprint that it has made on the Portland employment market, uh, Certify is very deserving of the honor of 2019 Business of the Year. Congratulations. Who here in the room has done an expense report? Show of hands. All right, we've solved that for you. Automated. <laughs> Hooray, certified. That's all I need to say, I think. So it started in 2008 with this simple idea. Capture your receipts on a mobile phone, get your credit card, create the expense report, and voila, you're done. <clears throat> and here we sit 12 years later. In fact, I'm sorry, but the numbers of, here in Portland are correct, 130. We have an office in San Diego. But we also today now have offices in 11 cities, uh, including Canada, US, uh, England, uh, Barcelona, Spain, et cetera. And, and the big shift for us for the first t 10 years was really growing on our own. And uh, it, was, it was really an, ex an exciting period of time to go from four people above uh, Brew Pub in Portland, Maine to where we are today. But you know, it was really a, a, a great vision on the technology. And yes, we have great technology. I, I'm glad you appreciate it. I think accountants around the globe tend to appreciate what we do for them. But it really is about the people. It's about the, the team that we built here in Maine. It's about the, the willingness of people to move back to Maine. It's been amazing to see the boomerangers who've left and really are looking for an opportunity to be in the tech space and want to come back to Portland, want to come back to the Maine experience, or come up from Boston or come from New York. Um, we even have an employee that, um, he's actually here tonight, and I'm going to ask him to stand up. Johnny, can you stand up real quick? This is one of the craziest employees we have. He left San Diego and moved to Portland, Maine from San Diego. Thank you, John. <laughs> so see, there is hope for this tech scene in Maine, and there is hope for this entire lifestyle vision. So uh, it's, it's, it's with a tremendous amount of respect and, uh, that, that I accept this award on behalf of the, the team here today, uh, the, uh, the team in Portland. Yes, we are relocating to Auto Europe. Uh, if I could undo one decision, you know, many years ago we ran out of office space and we ended up with a second office and a third office. At one point we had four offices. And so it's great to bring everybody back under one roof. That'll happen in uh, hopefully next, early to mid next summer. And I think with that you'll continue to see the growth of Certify uh, you know, we love to put our employees first. I think we started out with a, a very small salary, very few commissions, and the basic medical plan. And today, I think we're, you know, probably one of the one of the most loaded organizations in terms of employee benefits, with paid maternity leave, uh, fertility uh, payments, etc. We're all about the employees and trying to give back to them so they can continue to grow the company. I've got one simple mission in my job. I take care of my team. The team takes care of the company. That's what I do. And uh, team, here it is for you. So thanks very much. Uh, congratulations again. Um, my last duty this evening um, is to introduce uh, a longtime colleague and friend of mine um, who 
is going to present uh, the next several awards. Um, I think many of you uh, who are here this evening probably have read the papers and know that we have a new mayor in the city of Portland. Um, Kate Snyder um, is a, uh, a dear friend and colleague of mine. Um, before she ran for mayor, um, she was an elected member of the school board. Uh, Kate and I were colleagues there for uh, five years. Um, and in fact served in leadership together. So there was a time when Kate was the chair of the school board uh, and I was the finance chair of the school board. Um, so I've known Kate for some time, um, as have uh, many people throughout the community of Portland. Um, Kate is an exceptional leader and exceptional manager of people and processes. She obviously ran uh, a very successful campaign recently. She carried uh, every precinct uh, in the most recent election, so that alone is pretty impressive. Uh, she was inaugurated uh, just last week, so this is uh, really one of her first uh, ma major duties uh, that, that she has on her plate. Um, so uh, on behalf of the Economic Development Committee, on behalf of uh, the rest of the community in the city of Portland, it is my great honor to welcome my friend and colleague, our new mayor, Kate Snyder. Hi, I'm Kate Snyder. Thanks for having me here tonight. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Justin, for the intro. Um, I am on day seven um, of this new role, and so far, so good. It's been a lot of fun, and um, I feel very honored to have this uh, role and this opportunity within the community. Um, so thank you um, all for inviting me here this evening, and it's great to be here honoring these five businesses tonight. Um, I have the honor of giving away the next two awards. Um, the first is the 2019 Economic Development Achievement Award, which goes to Kevin Bunker and Developers Collaborative. So for the 2019 Economic Development Achievement um, of the Year Award, uh, um, we want to celebrate Kevin Bunker and his team for their many contributions to Portland, both with private-public partnerships and with redeveloping historic properties. Under Kevin Bunker's leadership, developers, co sorry, de developers Collaborator, based in Portland, is a real estate development and management company investing in projects that build community. As founding principal of DC in 2007, Mr. Bunker provides consistent direction regarding smart growth, environmental stability, and sustainability, affordable housing, and innovative design. DC employs a community-based approach to planning and building and frequently participates in public-private partnerships to achieve public goals. The developer's collaborative team has years of experience developing and structuring finance, financing for complex, complex projects with a community benefit. Uh, DC also works on real estate solutions for some of Maine's most iconic businesses, including Jackson Labs and L.L. Bean. As previously noted, DC has redeveloped many historic properties into beneficial uses throughout Maine. Examples in Portland include my kids' alma mater, Nathan Clifford School on Falmouth Street, which was redeveloped into apartments, um, as well as the Mother House, uh, Sisters of Mercy property in the Deering Center neighborhood, redeveloped into a mix of affordable and market rate rental senior housing. In 2017, DC responded to the city's RFP for the sale and reuse of the former Reed School building and property and was awarded the project. A portion of the property has been redeveloped into a new facility for Children's Odyssey, which is a preschool for children who have learning challenges. And the rest of the property will be redeveloped into eight residential units. The company is now focused on further redevelopment of the former Sisters of Mercy campus particularly the former Maine Girls Academy, which was Catherine McCauley High School. Another example, uh, is, another example is the private public partnership for DC renovating 66 State Street into an affordable housing project with a lodging house with 38 rooms and 30 units of rental housing, which is very much needed in the city of Portland. So it is my honor to award this, um, uh, to present this award to Kevin Bunker and the De Developers Collaborative. Thank you. 
When I got the email that I won this award, I was like, really, me, us? It was a, it's a great honor, but I was kind of surprised. And then I saw the other people who were considered for the award, and I thought again, really, us, me? But, uh, but I'm not going to give it back. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> so um, I don't have any remarks prepared either, but you heard some of the themes. I think we all in the business community here really have a lot of the same feelings about Portland. It's a, it's a special place, but in the end, it's really about the people. And um, one of the first people that I think it's important for me to talk about is a previous winner of this award back in 2009. And I don't know, that, that's uh, the guy who taught me real estate, Richard Berman, who's here in the audience. And um, <clears throat> Right there. I have to say, though, I think it's probably a lot easier to win this in 2009 because you just had to do one thing, because there was nothing going on in 2009. So he, he, got, he got one project done and he won the award. So, but I'm just, I'm just saying, this one's maybe a little more important. But So I, I, I met Richard in, I think, May of 2006, and it was right down the street here at the, what's now the Gorham Savings Bank building, which is a building that I was fortunate enough to redevelop a couple of years ago. But I, I met Richard. And it, uh, it, all came full, it all came full circle, but um, I was a planning student at the time, getting a master's in planning, and I wanted to learn a little bit about real estate. And I walked into to, uh, this guy's office, and uh, I walked out with a new career. And I wasn't, I wasn't looking for a job. I wasn't doing an informational interview. I, wasn't, I just wanted to kind of learn a little bit about it. I'd heard him speak and appreciate his message and wanted to learn a little bit more about it. And he said, you don't want to be a planner. You want to be a developer. Come be a developer with me. And uh, you know, and that, that changed my life and changed the life of my family. And I, I'm forever grateful for that. He he taught me a lot. He taught me, he taught me the the nuts and bolts of real estate, the the creativity and the public-private partnerships that you heard uh, reference in the mayor's remarks. Was that's that's Richard. Those are the things that he he taught me. And uh, he and we did this we did this project with Maine Medical Center. One of the fir the first thing I ever did in Portland was Crescent Heights. It was Maine's first platinum lead building, and it was uh, first platinum lead multifamily building right next to uh, the hospital at Maine Medical Center. And the, the, the way we, the, the, we always talk about how the legal agreements and the, and the structure is really the most creative part of the project. You think of, you think of architecture as a creative profession, but you don't necessarily think of development as a creative profession. But Richard, Richard taught me that it was, and, and he taught me that there was no, there was always a way to get something done. And sometimes that's led me to try to seek out the more complicated projects. Um, just, that's, that's how he did it, and that's kind of how I do it, but I'm forever grateful to, to what he taught me. Um, and, but he, he always worked alone, and uh, I, I met Laura one day, and Laura is on the, on the, she didn't get to vote for me, she's on, the, she's on the corporation board, but I was told she wasn't allowed to vote for me, but she was my, she was my first employee, and I, I met her when she was still a grad student, just like I was when I met Richard, and uh, I said, come, come talk to me when you, uh, when you graduate because I was, I was meeting a lot of people, a lot of smart people at that time that were looking for jobs and I didn't, I didn't have a plan to have a company so I said, you know, I'm not hiring but you should call this one or call that one and, I'd, and I would see these people, the, the, the smart ones, the good ones anyway, would show up at my competitors and they would show up with these great jobs and I thought, you know what, the next smart one I meet, I'm going to hire them. And Laura was the next smart one I met. And, uh, I, hired, I hired Laura and that was kind of the beginning, that was a slippery slope of uh, you know, hiring smart people. And uh, Laura and I were, had the corner of Richard's office and we just kind of figured it out. And um, that now the company is, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, 18 people. I'm not even quite sure, but um, we have a, a development, two full-time project managers, Laura's one, Mike in the back is the other, and then a management company that manages what we do. And I never, I never saw myself as someone who was going to build a company. I saw myself as someone who wanted to do interesting things that had a had a, a community benefit, and I think we've been able to do that. Um, you know, those, all those schools and projects that were mentioned are all in different neighborhoods of Portland, and each neighborhood has its own dynamics, and some of them are challenging, and some of them are less so, but they all have, they all have you have to get in and, and meet the people and learn what the issues are in the neighborhood in order to be successful in Portland. And um, I've, I started my career doing mostly stuff outside of Portland because I think it was the, the approach that we had and the, the skills that we were able to bring to bear were it was a lot easier to compete in a lot of other places. And I guess I maybe wasn't ready for the, you know, the big time yet of Portland and to be able to get stuff done here. And, and now most of my projects are down in southern Maine and, um, and it's, you know, it's, a, it's a little more, 
this is a special award. I've, I've, I have some awards that I've been able to get. We've been recognized for doing things, but it, this one means a little more. You know, this one means a lot to, to be recognized for this award. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it, it's really an honor. Um, it's really an honor to be trusted with some of these old historic buildings to, to do right by them. It's an honor to be um, in charge of trying to create this operation that, that continues to do the good things that it's done. And it's, uh, it's been uh, an exciting experience to kind of grow along as the city has come back from the recession, to grow along with it. Um, and I'm, I'm thrilled to, to win this award today. And uh, certainly thank you all for, uh, for coming. Congratulations, Kevin. Um, the, uh, the next award is the 2019 Legacy Award, which will go to Paradigm Window Solutions. This is a business that has been in operation for the last 20 years and has made substantial contributions to the city. Paradigm Window Solutions has been building energy star rated premium quality vinyl windows for residential and commercial applications for over 30 years. Not all windows are created equal, a statement Paradigm thrives on. The Paradigm product line was built from the ground up with the intention to fill a market gap in the vinyl window industry at the time to satisfy the diverse climate needs of New England. Their, primary, their premium quality products are designed and fabricated in Maine and exceed the requirements of the American Architectural Manufacturing Association Gold Label Certification for integrity and quality. Paradigm employs 230 people, including many new Mainers from 15 different countries, as well as graduates from area high schools and career and technical education centers and colleges. They offer supplemental health, dental, vision benefits, company paid, life insurance, 401k, holidays, paid time off, and tuition reimbursement. In recent years, Paradigm has partnered with multiple educational and job seeking oriented organizations to implement programs to facilitate their career growth. As the workforce began to shift from local high school graduates to an influx in immigrant populations, the company adapted training procedures to support English as a second language employees. So, English, so, so folks who came speaking a language other than English, thank you for that. Uh, Paradigm has a long and valued legacy in the city of Portland, and we're proud to have you here in Portland. Accepting this award this evening is Mark Morin, CEO of Paradigm Window Solutions. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you, Mayor Snyder. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think we intended for you to do a pitch for Paradigm Windows, but we do appreciate it. It's a great job. Uh, and we at Paradigm actually do appreciate glass awards. We do a lot with glass ourselves. Um, and uh, this award really goes to the Paradigm team. And if I could uh, ask everybody from Paradigm who's here tonight, please stand up. Okay. So, this, this gives you a sense of who's paying the bar tab tonight, okay? Um, I'd like to start by thanking the City of Portland, uh, uh, Mayor Snyder, uh, the Portland Development Corp for this award. Uh, we really value it. We value our uh, connection to Portland. Uh, you know, we are all Mainers at, uh, at Paradigm Windows and we uh, have, you know, been so involved with uh, Portland. Uh, we moved from Riverside to Millican a few years ago. We got your help uh, during that. We have, uh, you know, been through ups and downs with uh, recession. Uh, we, you know, w went through trouble like most in the building products industry came back much stronger and uh, uh, we're a very strong company today. Uh, we were originally founded by the applicators um, building products distribution group who decided they wanted their own proprietary window 
uh, aimed at the main climate, and uh, it turns out uh, they then sold uh, the Paradigm Window business off, and um, uh, I'm part of the group that acquired uh, Paradigm in 2015. The, um, the product is a workhorse. It's a phenomenal product. Uh, uh, Energy Star uh, rated in most instances. We can do all kinds of specialty windows. We can do shapes. You want them flanged together, we can do that. Uh, special uh, glass. And I just want you to know that that snow last week was actually one of our marketing programs to get you to realize it's time to put those new windows in, okay? Uh, I, I thank you for recognizing the diversity of our workforce. Uh, we actually currently have uh, uh, people from 17 countries speaking 27 different languages in the place. So it's really a, um, it's a magnet for immigrants that come to the community. Uh, you know, we like to think of ourselves as welcoming. We have many programs and many ways of attracting uh, new arrivers at our city, and uh, we really do appreciate them. And we pride ourselves on training and growing and advancing uh, people who come to us from, uh, from other countries. We are very plugged into the educational programs here in the community. Uh, the main quality center has given us two grants in the last year that helps us train uh, people coming out of high school on how to you know, use some of the equipment and be able to do the types of uh, 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 you know, manufacturing activities that we do. We have uh, a main state approved apprenticeship program. We are uh, partnered with Destination Occupation with the Career Center of Maine, uh, the Portland Adult Ed. Uh, we, are, uh, we help with uh, a lot of reentry from uh, the local uh, correctional facilities as well. So we're involved with HireVet. We're involved with the Portland Chamber of Commerce. I don't think we could be any more integrated in this community, to be honest with you. So um, you have allowed us to grow. You have allowed us to continue attracting people uh, uh, to work with us. Uh, you have allowed us to sell our product as far north as Caribou, as far west as um, uh, the western shores of Michigan, as far south as Tennessee. Uh, it's a great product. Made in Maine is a great brand. And uh, I would just want to say thank you very much for this award. And um, it's going to get cold. You need those windows. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, at this point, um, I want to thank everybody for coming out to join us this evening. Congratulations to our five wonderful award winners. And thank everybody for their time. Have a wonderful holiday season. Um, on behalf of the PDC and the City of Portland, thank you for coming out. Congratulations to these great winners and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.